services. That yeah, have. white balance. Speak, talk, hello, hello. Wonderful. Uh, and this is Bobby's microphone, getting ready to talk with Lou Diamond. Philip. Well, Lou, it's good to see you again. We it's last good to see uh, you. spoke in this hotel when you were here for Stand and Deliver. That's right. It was the same hotel, wasn't yes. it? Except we were uh, on, in another wing or something like that. I, slowly but surely, I think I'm going to get to see all of these rooms <laughs> and make, make notes and compare. Well, let's hope, because that'll mean your career is going well. Oh, yeah, that, that would mean that, wouldn't it? Well, we'll keep the fingers crossed. I can't complain. I've been very lucky and uh, very fortunate. The roles that have come up have been very challenging and very diverse, and that's something I set out to do a long time ago. Um, and there's a, there's a lot of uh, material to be overlooked out there, but on the same token, there's a lot of material that is very, very good, and fortunately, a lot of it is making its way into my hands. I was thinking... It, now, when was it you did La Bamba? Which, uh... Summer of 86. Uh, it was the summer of 1986 that I did La Bamba. It's, been, it's hard to believe that it's been two years now and that uh, I've actually been living in Los Angeles for that long. The time has really flown, although after doing Young Guns, and uh, I followed that up with a film for Disney called Waiting for Salazar. It's a comedy. I figured out that I've, I've actually lived in my own house uh, in Los Angeles less than a month out of this entire year. And I'll be doing another uh, another project uh, on location starting in uh, September. What so, will that be? Uh, I'm going to do another film with Kiefer Sutherland. Uh, Kiefer and I, I feel, are very close, and uh, we got along very well on Young Guns. So when they offered uh, they offered me this role, I said, "Well, who's going to do the other role?" And uh, they talked about a lot of other people. And when Kiefer's name came up, I said, "Well, that's it. Uh, I think the chemistry between us is very, very good. Not only that." I like being with Kiefer as a person. He's, he's a good man. He's got a good heart. And I have an in, immense respect for his ability. I think uh, for being 21, this guy is one of the finest actors in our age range. As a matter of fact, I just talked with him in Los Angeles. Oh, did you? Yes, oh, and good. he said to give you a big howdy for him. <laughs> <laughs> Kiefer said, yeah, then give Lou a big howdy for me, would you? I think he's like the, uh, uh, he's inheriting the Jack Nicholson legacy with that voice. He's got such a great voice, you know, in the eyebrows. How you doing, Lou? Good to see you again. And he's incredible. <laughs> Uh, so uh, I, I'm just wondering then, from what you're saying about you and Kiefer became mm -hmm. such good friends, uh, while you were making Young Guns, did you all kind of hang out together when you were off camera, or did you kind of pair up, or what? No, abs there, was, there was no clicks happening on the set of Young Guns. There was no, uh, it's interesting, I mean, we were, we were, we were together from the start. Uh, all of us came onto the picture very early. They, uh, they gathered the ensemble, I guess, a good three, four months before we actually started shooting. And with each guy that, uh, that joined, joined the group, there was that much more excitement. I actually met Charlie uh, socially before we did the film, and at the time he was committed to another project. And he said to me, oh yeah, you're working with my brother, that's great, it's a great script, you know. And he said, I, I really envy you, I wish I could do the film. I said, yeah, I wish you could too. And a month later, I got a call that, uh, you know, Charlie was on board. So immediately I got on the phone and, you know, everybody was so excited. We all ended up training together, meaning, uh, you know, the guys with their guns and then all of us on horseback for a good month. We did a lot of riding together and uh, out there uh, falling on our rumps and, and basically being crazy, which tended to bring all of us closer together. Um, but during the actual shooting, it's amazing how, how close-knit close, close -knit we were. I really didn't expect us to be uh, such a unit. Uh, not that I want to instigate any, you know, brat pack kind of, uh, you know, ideas. I mean, if we socialize together, all of a sudden we get labeled. But the truth of the matter is, is that we, uh, we went out together a lot. You know, we had dinner together on, on numerous occasions. You know, one night over at, you know, the one person's uh, condo and the other night, you know, the next person's. And we'd all go up and sing on stage at the bar, you know, because uh, it was there and the Kiefer plays a mean guitar and God, believe it or not, I actually sang. <laughs> Thank God there were no cameras. Um, but, you know, we, we just had a wonderful time. Had a wonderful time, and we, we became very close-knit. And I consider all of them uh, good friends now. And I would work with any of them in a second. Uh, there, was, there were no egos. There was no prima donnaism. We all knew that for this film to work, the chemistry and the ensemble had to be there, and that everybody had their chance in the spotlight. And... Uh, when the time came, you also had to take a step back and be there as a support. You know, there was no fighting for the camera. What is this impression you do of Charlie Sheen? <laughs> okay. Um, 
Charlie played Pictionary with us quite a few times, and uh, he's he's got an incredible sense of humor. Charlie does, but he, it's best with a cigarette, which I don't happen to have on me right now. But you got to okay, picture picture the cigarette, and Charlie's. There was a person drawing just dots, and the answer was dot. But Charlie, go, it, it goes off in it, and it goes a little like this. <laughs> this is a. Um, we're looking at a. Um, it's an abyss. It's the end of the 20th century as we know it. It's. Uh, uh, it's a Kafkaesque kind of nightmare in a Shakespearean soliloquy. No, it's, uh, is it a chair? No, it isn't a chair. It's, um, <laughs> when it, 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 Charlie, Charlie, what does it look like? It looks like a dot. It's a dot. Oh, it's a dot. It's a dot. It, this is a dot. <laughs> bravo, oh, bravo, <laughs> bravo. <laughs> Marvelous. <laughs> Let's talk about your what I refer to as your big scene in the movie. It is my big <laughs> scene because Chavez is, is uh, he's a very nonverbal character. I think his action speaks louder than his words. And uh, I don't mind being on the short end of the stick as far as saying things, as long as my character has a lot to say, which I feel he does. Um, but the big scene is, is a very pivotal point. And uh, the interesting thing was is that I was taken to the hospital the night before with 104 temperature. They weren't sure I could work the next day, and the doctor gave me medication, and, and I shot the scene with a with 102 fever. But there was no way in the world I was going to miss doing that scene because it meant a lot to me, and I'm and I'm very happy with how it came off. Did you do the scene as written, or did you kind of change it around? I embellished a little bit. Uh, the nice thing about working on this film was there was a lot of freedom. Christopher Kane, as the director, uh, let us create the roles. During the peyote scene, I came up with the makeup myself. I, I applied it myself on camera, even though uh, that got cut out of the film. Um, as far as the big speech goes, and I always, anytime I ever wanted to change something, uh, it's not exactly like I could change that much. If I were doing a contemporary piece, I could probably use my own vernacular a little bit more, but seeing as, as uh, there was a definite regionality and a definite speech pattern that I'm not familiar with, I stuck to the script an awful lot. Uh, if I had a question or if I wanted to embellish, I talked to John Fusco, the writer. John was thrilled with the cast because he got everybody he wanted. And I know for a writer that's got to be thrilling. Um, he got everyone he wanted and therefore he knew that we were going to create the roles that he envisioned, even if they weren't letter perfect. So if I had, if I had a change, I always went and checked it with John first because I, I respect his words. And I respected his words a lot, so I said, how tight are you to this? Can I do this to this? Um, so I ended up adding, there were a few lines in the speech that are of my own, uh, my own making. For instance, the line, uh, I'm not afraid of dying, is uh, to me was a big point that I had to stress. You know, I had to stress that, that, that this guy is no coward. He's just intelligent enough to, to know that if we continue in this madness, we're going to get killed, you know. So I added a few lines in the speech to um, drive a few points that I felt were very uh, applicable home. You talked about uh, the makeup. Uh, is there any anything authentic about that? Uh, John Fusco again. It was like John Fusco was a. Uh, he's, he's this Italian guy, and he's he's like a paisan. He um, he understood what we were going for, and he gave us the tools to do it with. Uh, he gave me a book on peyote religion uh, as a gift when we first started shooting, and I read the book. And from the book, I was able to glean an awful lot of uh, Chavez's spiritual side. And I wanted to use that as a reflection and do something different on film or something that would be, that would be very uh, surprising in this particular film. Um, and during the peyote religion, especially during that time with the Navajos, there was a, there was a, a, a meshing of, of Christianity and uh, the pagan religion. But uh, a few things stayed intact. The, the actual ceremonies could actually go on for days. Uh, so I condensed it down, and they often uh, used makeup to disguise themselves as the spirits because they truly believed they were entering the spirit world, and therefore, to keep from getting harmed by the spirits, they had to disguise themselves as the spirits. So that's why I used the skull makeup. Uh, not to mention the fact that I knew it would look real good on film. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think Indians will react to this? Um, I sincerely hope that the reaction to my character in this film will be the same sort of reaction that the Hispanic community has given me on La Bamba and Stand and Deliver. The fact that I can take a role and, and will not play into the stereotype, 
that I can uh, make sure that the integrity remains intact of the character, that there is dignity within the character, and uh, that there is a certain ability there, that the work, even though I am not uh, in a majority Indian, I'm an eighth Cherokee, um, even though I am not 100% of that community, I am still representing them on the screen and uh, hopefully representing them and putting, putting a good foot forward for them and uh, basically uh, showing my respect for their culture you know, on the screen. So uh, you're going to do another Disney picture. Uh, no, I just finished a Disney, Disney. picture. Okay, yes. the one with Kiefer is not Disney. No, uh, right now I don't believe there is a distribution deal in place, although I understand uh, it's more than likely going to be a universal film. Uh, the writer's strike is, so is slowing a lot of things up. Uh, we will go into production uh, in the beginning of September. It's a contemporary action thriller cop kind of film. Uh, and again, I'm, you know, I'm jumping all over the dramatic map here. I'm uh, trying to uh, find something new, trying to find something that challenges me. And hopefully, uh, again, we'll surprise the audience with uh, another facet of my, uh, my versatility. I cannot believe you have all of these films in the span of two and a half years. Uh, a lot has happened. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very amazing to me. It's amazing to me that uh, things have fallen in place the way they have. You know, I mean, somebody's watching over me and he's doing a darn good job. Um, but it's also choices. It's also using uh, the growing status and the position, hopefully in an intelligent manner, and getting, uh, getting the best out of the, out of the mileage. You know, just um, choosing roles that uh, in films that I think are going to do well, and and that's not necessarily commercial because I chose Stand and Deliver not because I thought it was going to be a commercial success, but because I thought it was going to be a milestone in my career as an actor because it had something to say, and because it uh, after the commercial success of La Bamba, I truly wanted to be considered an actor, and not a, a fluke or a celebrity or something like that, um, and I will continue to do that and bounce around and. Uh, will not always do a film because I think it's going to be a hit. I'll do a film because it has something to say to me and that I feel a, a piece of me can go into it. How difficult is it to stay out of all the Hollywood hoopla? It's not difficult at all. I mean, uh, the interesting thing is, is I, when I was living in Dallas, I had an immense fear of L.A. and Hollywood. I mean, it's like Big Brother, you know, you hear all the, the, the horror stories of people uh, going out there and getting caught up in the fast lane and doing this and doing that and uh, I don't know you know I think if your if your values are in place and you uh, you know what you want out of life and you have a way of living then it's up to you to keep it that way I mean I live in the Hollywood Hills but uh, I, I look out of my windows and I don't see another house I don't go out dancing every night or partying or whatever I don't live in the fast lane you can make that choice and I'm surrounded by very good people many of whom are my friends from way back in Texas. I mean, there's a Texas Mafia out there in L.A. now that's amazing, you know. Um, people who I studied with at the Film Actors Lab who now live out there. Uh, my wife, uh, good friends of mine who, uh, who respect what I stand for, not only respect it, but uh, support it, you know. I mean, my life has changed, but hopefully I haven't. It's still stable. Oh, yes. It is still stable, and in Young Guns, it was very stable. Uh, stable of horses, <laughs> as a matter of fact. Well, that was bad. That was a bad one. Well, it's good to see you again, Lou. It's and good to see, uh, you, good to see all the wonderful things that are happening to you. Good performance, great performance in Young Guns. Thank you very much. Enjoyed it very that a lot. much. Thanks. Okay. That's all, folks. I mean, he, he, he's had some hard knocks, and he's come out on the other side as a survivor, but he's also come out without being bitter, without being jaded, mm -hmm. and uh, without being a jerk. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, he's a charming man and incredibly faithful and loyal to his family. I, I actually, I went up and spent some time with him, uh, Julie and I, after we finished uh, Salazar. Uh, drove up to, uh, to a small town in Montana where he had actually, he rented a house where Emilio also owns some property there. Yeah. Um, and he was there with his, with his new baby. And, you know, well, okay, fine, so I stayed quiet for a few days. So finally, who do I pick? to walk up to and say, you know that other grip, Julie? Uh, is she attached? And he looked down at me from this height, and he says, yes, she is, to me. One of the other guys was asking me, and he, he didn't have the guts to ask, so I thought I'd ask, and uh, yeah. <laughs> so that was kind of crazy. OK, Bobby. Tell me about your big scene, or at least I'm calling it your big scene. 
It, uh, well, it is my big scene. I, I consider it sort of the pivotal point uh, of the character because he's nonverbal. Okay, that's fine. All right. Whose idea was the makeup? That was my idea. Actually, John Fusco gave me a, uh, a book, uh, Peyote Rituals, and uh, I gleaned... That's, that's fine. Okay. Uh, now, what I'm alluding to here is that mm -hmm. you did the scene uh, with fever. Okay. Right. What are you going to remember about doing that scene? The fact that I had uh, 102 temperature when I shot it and 104 the night before. They weren't sure I could work. Wow. Okay. Um, what is this impression you do of Charlie Sheen? Uh, okay, Charlie Sheen. Charlie playing Pictionary. You got a picture of the cigarettes. Um, Charlie, That's Charlie, fine. Charlie. That's fine. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, when you guys were working and you had off time, did you kind of go off in pairs or uh, all hang out together or what? I was amazed at the camaraderie on the set. I mean, we, we trained together, we worked together, and we were together. That's fine. Okay. Um, there was something. Oh. How do you think Indians will react to the movie? Hopefully, very positively, like the uh, like the Hispanic community reacted to me in *Standing the River in La Bamba. As I look back over your two and a half, as I look back over the last two years, it's just amazing all that you have done. I've been very lucky. I, uh, I think someone has been uh, pulling some strings for me, and uh, they're doing a darn good job of it. Okay. Uh, I'll do one more. Okay. Is it difficult to avoid all the Hollywood hoopla? Not necessarily. I mean, you choose your way of living, and uh, even if you're living in L.A., you don't have to live in the fast lane. Uh, should, do we need just some yeah. talk about it? So oh, tell me about Salazar, what that is. Oh, about. it's hilarious. Uh, it's, it's a very, very funny movie. Um, Corbin Burson plays a man named Frank Salazar, who's a bank robber. He is staking out a bank in Montana, and he sends out four postcards to Redondo Beach, Miami, Chicago, and New York. I'm a beach mom from Redondo Beach. What he's done is he's bringing together his gang to pull out this bank job. The police had arrested him. We decide to pull out the bank job, and the next thing you know is it's, it becomes like a fatal farce. Uh, you know, slight misses and uh, uh, cross paths and mistaken identities, and it, it gets very, very crazy. The last. Uh, never be misled. I have very strong 